insane in a perfect situation. Hello and welcome to this week in sports for Friday, October 28th, 2016. I'm Mike McClung here alongside newcomer Jack Kroll. Jack, how are you doing today? Good. Good. How are you, Mike? I'm good. Thank you. So we're going to start. It's the World Series. It's the most exciting time of the year, in my opinion, anyway. The series is tied 1-1. They're heading back to Chicago now. What have we seen so far, and what are you looking forward to going forward? Um, from what I've seen out of uh, Kluber, I know that they said that they're going to start on game one, four, and seven. And I think that's great for Cleveland. I mean, he was lights out in game one. Um, I mean, he was r ridiculous. And Miller slider was just nasty. It was just filthy in game one as well. Yeah, and you got to figure if Chicago does the same thing with Leicester, any game where it's Kluber versus Leicester, I'm giving the edge to the Indians, regardless of it's in Cleveland or Chicago, because Indians have seemed to figure out you can run all over yeah. Leicester. And they've done a great job that's, of that so far. And that's not what the Dodgers did at all. Oh, against, gosh, I don't know what against the Dodgers did. I don't know what the rest of the league is I don't thinking, know. I mean... Yeah, you can definitely get great jumps on him. Lester had a guy picked off the other yeah. night, and he didn't throw over. So any game where Kluber's starting, I give the edge to the Indians. Actually, I picked the Cubs to win last night's game when they had Arietta going. I got that one right, and I did expect them to even it up. But going forward, I still think the Indians are going to win this series. I think they're just – honestly, I think they're the better team. The way Chicago's bats have cooled down right now, Chicago's pitching can be good when it's at its best, but, you know, they have guys where – you just don't know what you're going to get out of them every night, but and that scares me. The, the one thing I will say is, man, Kyle Schwarber was just, I mean, that's, I think, the best story I've heard in a while in baseball. It's kind of weird because usually when you go home, you get the advantage, but I think Chicago is actually losing that because they're not going to have Schwarber in their lineup for yeah. those games. And you know what? It, it's really kind of something that I think is is just a huge loss for Chicago because he, he isn't ready and he isn't healthy enough to play the field. and. And I'm not going to blame John Madden on that because, you know, he wasn't healthy enough and he hasn't been that good in the field. He's not, you know, yeah. he's not the best outfielder there is, but uh, his bat is really a huge loss for the Cubs. Yeah, he's a little bit of a liability in the field. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how the series progresses going forward. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing just great pitching by Cleveland. And if Arietta did what he, could, what he could do, I could see them putting him on short rest going into game six or seven if need be in, in Cleveland. So what is your prediction for the final? I'm going to say seven games, Cubs win. Ooh, all right. Well, I'm, I'm going to say if it's most likely going to be um, Kluber versus Arietta and Arietta's going to top them all. Okay, I mean, that's fair. I mean, Cause he, th the he, Cubs can't win a World Series, in my opinion. That's a, <laughs> I mean, they're going to I mean, eventually well, have people, to choke. People thought he was, they weren't going to the World Series. So I, I mean, mean, I don't think it's much of a shock that they got there. I mean, I, I just don't think they're going to win it. Something about the Cubs, you just you don't win World Series. If it's you're like the, the Browns in football. Yeah, I mean, you, you just lose. That's it's what you do. You're the NFC East. Apparently, this year you win games because all five or all, excuse me, all four teams are above 500. We got the Eagles and Cowboys coming up this weekend. Prescott and Wentz. I want to start with saying, who would you rather have as a quarterback going forward? Um, I think. Dak Prescott a little bit more just because he's – I feel like he's a little bit more comfortable than Wentz. Wentz has been shaky in some starts, and Dak's look really strong uh, um, than, than Wentz, and I think that's why I'd like him over Wentz. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Wentz is a guy – he's coming from D2 in college. You know, obviously he was at the best program in D2 ever, yeah. but so you can't take that away from no. him. He's played great in the league. I don't want to say that he's not going to be a productive player, but what Dak Prescott has done, he played against good SEC defenses in college. He's doing, you know, obviously – a much better yeah. competition now yeah. in the pros, and he's still doing well. That's why I give the edge to him. He's a little bit more developed, so I think that's why maybe he's out in front right now doing better, putting up better stats. But I think even going forward, he's definitely – to me, he's the quarterback of the future for the Cowboys. And I think this week, I think the, the Cowboys can beat the Eagles because I've heard Dez is coming back, so I think that's really going to give Dallas a big boost. In so this you're week. picking Dallas in that yeah, game? Yeah, I am. Oh, I just, it kills me to say it, but I think I'm picking Dallas too. I think they're going to win that division. I don't think Tony Romo is ever going to get his job back. I don't know. I mean, hey, he could come to our Jets. I'm not going to say no. It's better I than mean, what we've got now. Listen, if you're the Jets right now <laughs> are a whole other animal. We're they're a hot just, mess. They're, they're, I mean, i got to give credit to Evan. He's not on the show this week. But last week he said Geno Smith was going to get hurt and Fitzpatrick was going to come in and play amazing because that's what Fitzpatrick does. He just yeah. is the backup, and then as soon as he becomes the starter, then he starts playing good. And for however he did it, he predicted Geno Smith's injury perfectly because Geno Smith tore his ACL, which is – Awful, not to take that, you know, not to say that's a good thing, but it's just amazing that Evan yeah. could I, see I, that. I, don't know. I, I, you know, I still don't think Fitzpatrick's going to be a great quarterback for the rest of the year. But no, I mean, no, he if, did lead them to a comeback yeah. this week. So, and if um, I would like to see Petty, I, I mean, if this season goes downhill, I would like to see him throw in Petty and see how we can do against an NFL team. 
yeah, NFL so defense. Got to give credit where credit is due there. I just wanted to throw that out to Evan. We're going to move on to the Warriors now and the rest of the basketball. We were talking before, do we think the NBA Finals is going to be set? If you don't mind, I'm going to start on this one. I don't think so because no. the Warriors looked awful. They were, look, they were terrible. I mean, they lost to the Spurs. That was just such a bad game for them. I mean, Kevin Durant came out with a few statements just saying, like, that's not who we are. And I mean, that was just a terrible outing from, from Golden State. I mean, you got to figure Cleveland's going to be back. I yeah, mean, in my opinion, anyway, Evan thinks I mean, the Knicks, but but you know, I mean they they really crush they crush the Knicks, right? So I mean they're gonna be back. To me though, the Warriors, I don't know. I mean a lot of people are really overlooking the Spurs, and I kind of did it myself. But then I looked at their lineup on opening day, and I realized some of the names they had. Tony Parker's getting up there in age, but he's still really good. They added Pau Gasol, they got Aldridge, and Kawhi Leonard is becoming a superstar very quickly. To me, they're almost as star-studded as the Warriors are, and we just overlooked them. And I think I think they're probably the most underrated team in the NBA. I mean, and when you look, I think it's going to be the Eastern, uh, the West, uh, excuse me, the Western Conference Finals again uh, this year than it, like it was last year, Golden State and San Antonio. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple other teams that you see maybe challenging them for it, but I don't think you could put you know the Trailblazers no. or the Thunder in the same category as either of those teams. Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, you just I, I think you you would most likely give the edge to San, uh, to the Spurs, but. You know, obviously there's going to be there could be injuries or you know what have you going into the season. And it's it's way too early to say. I mean, the Warriors. I fully expect them to turn it around and be you know one of the best teams yeah. by all means. But are they better than the Spurs? I mean, on paper, yes. But in reality, when it comes down to it, the Spurs play great together. They have a better coach, and maybe that chemistry comes could through be. in the end for them. And the one thing I would like to say is that the Knicks. I mean, they did play the best team in the NBA opening day so you can't give that much credit to him but um and Joakim Noah was not was not that great I mean he uh I think he went over seven from the floor and it just he did not look good at all it's not very good I know uh Courtney Lee didn't have a great day scoring which my Hornets lost this offseason so mm. you, know, you hate to root against your guy but that's what he gets for leaving Charlotte we're gonna move on to college football now I'm gonna let you take this one Penn State you root for them I know yeah huge upset upset against Ohio State Everything's all shooken up now. I don't know what's going on. I mean, that was, I think that was what Penn State needed because they were, they've been through so much for the last five years from the Sandusky, um, from the Sandusky uh, sanctions and everything else. I think that was just a huge lift for the whole community. Um, and you kind of saw that come out from James Franklin uh, in the post game interview and, and just so much that he really just wanted to enjoy that win because I think that was their signature win that they needed. And I think if uh, their schedule is looking easy, um, I know that they would need some luck, but they have a chance to go to the Big Ten Championship. I mean, that would be that would be remarkable. Who would have ever thought that coming yeah, from? Yeah, I mean, just going to be honest, I still don't see that happening personally. No, I mean, neither do I. Neither but, do I, but I'm, it'd be remarkable. Yeah, but regardless, I mean, I don't have anything personal against Ohio State, but when a little guy wins a big game like that, that's awesome to see. And now the landscape is all shaken up. Right now we got some new teams in the top four, and it's really exciting to see. I think you got to put Alabama. I mean, Alabama's the number one team right now. Of you course. got to figure they're going to make it. Michigan's looking really good right they're now. They're looking really sharp. So undefeated, and then you got maybe four or five teams that you could really make the argument could fit in that three and four spot. And the one thing I would like to say is that Ohio State, I think they got knocked out after Saturday. Mm, I mean, I there's a good chance they still have the game against Michigan. If they win that, they're the sixth seed right now. Yeah. If they win that game, they put themselves right back in the conversation, and you have to give them the edge over Michigan because they would have that head to head. Yeah, and that's that. That is the one thing that obviously the committee would have to look at and see who who's getting in and who's not. But that is huge for them. Do you want to name a champion real quick? Not yet, not it's, yet. No? It's, I think it's a little too early. Maybe Alabama, maybe, but I, I, I'm still going to say No, Alabama. we don't play that on, on this show. You're picking you, you got to give me your concrete pick right, right now. You're me, not allowed to change it. I will give you Alabama, Alabama. national champion. That's no fun. Michigan's going to win it. I think they're going to win the Big Ten championship. I'm thinking they're going to upset Alabama in the championship game. I don't know. I think I think I think Alabama could easily easily take the championship. Well, yeah, they easily could. They're the best team in the country. <laughs> but regardless, that's gonna wrap it up for this week in sports. For Jack Carl, I'm Mike McClung. Have a great night.